Be on TV UK for the community by the community www.beontvuk.com Birmingham e ra she pa she koto market ache Oriental supermarket she ra shobar majhe Mach mangsho shak shobji shob taja bhai er laiga to bo e randhone to mojai kha Orientale bazar kore eto shanti pai Oriental Hala Store, Coventry Road, Small Heath, Birmingham. Apni ki apna restaurant te jonno commercial cooker, tandoori, hot plate, oven, ebang canopy bishosto pratishthan kuchchen. Apni ki shokol shamugri UK Standard Service Certificate CE shahochan. তাহলে আর ভাবনা নেই সুদীর্ঘ কুড়ি বছর স্পেন ইটালি এবং বাংলাদেশে সুনামের সাথে ব্যবসা করার পর এখন বার্মিংহামে খোলা হলো আমাদের শোরুম এবং ফ্যাক্টরি আসসালামু আলাইকুম একটা ভালো রেস্টুরেন্ট এবং একটা ভালো ব্যবসার জন্য একটা ভালো কুকারের প্রয়োজন হয় আলহামদুলিল্লাহ আমি অনেকদিন খোঁজাখুঁজির পর বার্মিংহাম কমার্শিয়াল কুকার যারা সি অ্যাপ্রুভ তাদের কাছ থেকে আমি একটা কুকার কিনেছিলাম কুকারটা অত্যন্ত ভালো এবং খুবই ভালো সার্ভিস দিচ্ছে এবং তাদের ব্যবসা প্রতিষ্ঠানের সার্ভিসটাও খুবই ভালো Hello, welcome to Empowered Women's Show, a show that will inspire you, raise your aspiration and also empower you. On this show, we bring many women, inspirational women from all over the world, and you've met a few of them in my last show. Today, I have two very inspirational businesswomen who are joining me today. Not only are they inspiring everyone through the work that they, they, they do, but the businesses that they run also is a social enterprise, gives charity as well to help the wider community. So let me introduce you to my first guest. Her name is Rosie Gandhi, MBE. Now Rosie is a businesswoman and her company is called Miss Macaroon. She is a chief executive and the founder of the company, which she started with just 500 pounds. Um, Rosie, welcome to Empowered Women Show. We're so honoured to have you. Thank you, Fadley. I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks. Now, you, I mean, I'm so glad that you've come, actually, because the work that you do, we will be talking about how you got invited to the Royal Wedding as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we go um, talk about that, let me introduce my second guest. Um, it's... We have with us a celebrity, <laughs> Elsa from Frozen <laughs> um, and she's also the chief executive of One's Trainers. Mm. Not only is the chief executive at the age of what seven? How old are you? Five. Oh I'm so <laughs> sorry you're five. So do you want to introduce yourself? What's your name darling? Mia. So your name is Mia but did you say did you not ask me to call you Elsa? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome on the show, Mia. We're so glad to have you. Shall I introduce your mom or would you like to introduce her? Mm -hmm. You want me to? Okay. And we also have mom here, who is Angela Maya, um, Mahi from, and she's the director and the co-founder of One's Leisure Trainers, but also she's a headhunter. Yes. Now, Maya, you've actually designed these shoes which is in front of us here yes from a tragic moment in your life so i would like you to share with us one of the, that moment that helped you design these shoes well actually thank you first of all for inviting um, myself and my daughter mia uh, to your show uh, yeah i'm uh, one of the co-founders of uh, one's leisure trainers as you can see here um well, where this journey even came from um, is really five years ago. Uh, Mia is now 
five and a half, and uh, she was born in December 2016, and in uh, July 2017, uh, she was seven months old and was diagnosed with infantile acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, there's only 150 children diagnosed in the UK uh, a year. Um, so obviously it was shocking for us as a family. It's one of the most life-changing moments when you're a new parent and you're just finding your feet on how to be a parent and this beautiful child suddenly is so sick and you're given a diagnosis. Um, we then spent the next three years in treatment with her. It was a three-year treatment plan and um, we finally finished treatment two years ago. She rang the bell to mark the end of her journey, which was an incredible moment um, for us as a family. But the whole experience inspired a, a new chapter in our life that we weren't prepared for. And um, this is where the trainers comes from, which is um, all about every journey starts with one step. When Mia was diagnosed, we just stopped. You know, it's, we just stopped everything that we were doing. Um, I walked away from my life um, and Simon, Mia's dad, walked away from his life and we became round the clock parent carers for Mia. Um, and then when we came out of hospital, I went back to work, but she still had two years treatment left. Um, Simon's work was overseas, so he had to stop what he was doing and become a stay at home dad to look after her. Um, and it was during that period that we really thought about what do we do moving forward. Um, although it feels like your life has stopped, time doesn't stop. Um, and I think that's what we learned. But we learned in that journey to take one step at a time. And through that period, we needed something to just get us through our day, something lightweight, comfortable, something that um, would, you know, in hospital you find your feet can get really hot because you're on your feet all day. So we wanted something breathable. So we, ins we sort of poured all of our experiences, what we'd been through, into building a brand. Um, as you can see here, um, I'll show you um, our trainers. It's three that we started with, but it's been a long journey getting these to the UK um, with COVID, the pandemic and everything, which I'll, I'm sure you will ask me about. But uh, yeah, that's where the whole chapter came. And finally, um, this year we managed to get the trainers to the UK and now we're selling them. They're amazing, actually, because I do have a pair of shoes that, um, <laughs> and I have to admit they're the most comfortable trainers I've actually worn. Oh, thank and, you. Um, I love them. They go with, uh, they actually go with the max addresses as well. Yes, I'm wearing so. mine today. <laughs> um, I, I just want to point out, I'm a high heel person. I used to be all, all my life. Uh, oh, yeah, Mia's got hers as well. There you go. Um, and um, I, I think, but when you become a parent, you're on your feet all the time. And obviously, we spent so much time in hospital. Needing something comfortable became um, not just a requirement, but a, a desperate need. Um, so yeah, we, I, we we designed something in mind which is gender neutral. It's male and female, and uh, yeah, we designed them with, you know, wearing them with dresses and skirts, and you know, still being neutral with colours. Comfortable. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Now, Rosie, um, you, you know the work that you do, um, it's amazing. And I have to admit, I love your macaroons. That is one of the reasons I've become an advice on your board. <laughs> now, you started that business with just 500 pounds. And today, it's one of the most successful macaroon business. And you're actually trading with some of the high-end uh, market as well and restaurants. Please tell us, how did, you, how did you all start? Thank you, yeah, Fadjali. And I totally appreciate all of your support as one of our special advisors. Um, so it started 11 years ago now. Um, I was working as a pastry chef um, and I decided that actually I wanted to bring together all of my passions um, and some of my past experiences um, to set up Miss Macaroon. Um, and actually the kind of inspiration behind it was one of my close family members was in care when he was a young child. Um, it had a massive impact on him. He was really fortunate actually. He got to go back to his family after six months and there's so many young people in care who don't get that same opportunity 
and the statistics are horrendous of um, the young care leavers who end up on the streets or in the prison system when actually the council or, or the government is supposed to be their parents. And actually for me, I feel really fortunate that you know I got looked after really well um, and I wanted to provide um, opportunities for young people who had been in similar situations. So I took all of my kind of past um, work experiences and put them all together into Miss Macaroon, um, which yeah, I set up 11 years ago now, um, with £500 of my own money, and some free kitchen space from uh, my old catering college, University College Birmingham, in the city centre, and um, yeah, it's just kind of grown from there. Because you currently have few branches, what, what, where are your branches based? Yeah, so we've got our own retail stores. Um, our first retail store uh, opened in 2016 in the Great Western Arcade in Birmingham City Centre. So um, that's just off the, the business district. And just last year we opened our second store, um, and that's in Resorts World Birmingham, just by the NEC. Excellent, because I actually visited the Resort World one last week. and. Um, you actually started with £500 and people will think that's impossible. How did it make it possible? I think just understanding myself. So for me, um, as an entrepreneur, I know that I don't do very well with um, financial insecurity. So actually, for, th for the first year of the business, I was still working as a pastry chef. And um, you know, I was making sure that I could pay my bills. Um, and then on my two days off, I was developing the idea for the business, the branding, um, the packaging, you know, the recipes, and actually pl making a plan to do the first pilot program of the Macaroons That Make a Difference training course, which is the flagship program through which we help to build young people's skills and confidence and then get them into work. So your profit is reinvested back into the community uh, to help the young people. So how many people do you employ now at the moment? At the minute it's 33 um, and in our kitchen in particular um, all of our team apart from our chef trainer have all come through the programme so they have um, done a seven to ten week program and then been employed by us so we work um, to tailor each uh, intervention based on what each young person's needs are so sometimes they might um, have an eight hour per week contract it might be full time it might be you know between three weeks and 18 months it just depends on what kind of additional support needs they have Excellent, because uh, I mean, I've actually spoken to a few of uh, the young people that you take on and it's wonderful to see how they flourish, where they come to you without any direction or where they want to be, but after getting engaged with your programmes, they do find a path and go into different uh, directions or, and they follow their dreams. But at the moment, uh, from £500 to employ over 30 members of staff, now that is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, and so your funding, do you actually uh, have any other um, fundings that come through or is it all self-funded? Yeah, so we um, take on bits of grant funding for uh, piloting new programmes. So we're just coming towards the end of um, a, a lottery fund programme called Awards for All, which uh, is a £10,000 fund. Um, and that was to help us to develop a new programme. So some of our graduates created their own programme called Max Mad Leaders. And um, it's a training programme to give them the skills and support they need, so like mental health support, um, safeguarding skills, mental health first aid, um, and coaching skills and presenting skills so that they can uh, support other trainees, they can advise our board members, and they can also um, go out and promote the program. And it's they've done an amazing job. We've got our second cohort of MaxMad leaders in now, and they're just incredibly confident, doing a brilliant job of um, advising the board. You, you saw a couple of them talking at our annual general meeting last month, and they were just inspirational, weren't they? <laughs> they were, but you are the inspiration behind that. And it's so wonderful to see how um, you you are changing lives of other young people, but the also um, initially I mentioned that you were invited to the royal family's wedding. Now I think ev the viewers <laughs> would want to know how did how did that happen? Because tell us how how did that happen? Yeah, it was an amazing <laughs> day. Um, so we were invited to make the macaroons for uh, the engagement tour. So when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle came to Birmingham. 
uh, they had a session at Millennium Point where they met lots of uh, young school kids and they talked about um, STEM subjects for, for young girls and uh, I gave up got up and gave a talk um, and they tried our macaroons and off the back of that then we got an invite to the, the royal wedding which was absolutely amazing it was a really we made a weekend of it you know we've got to do a weekend <laughs> wedding <laughs> so yeah we made it a full a full thing of it it was great so it was the taste of a macaroon that actually got the invitation to the royal wedding <laughs> wow <laughs> and it was the taste of your macaroon that brought me on board <laughs> Now you can tell how amazing the macaroons are and they're so tasty. Uh, I, I eat a lot of macaroons but I have not found anything as tasty as yours yet. Mm, thank you They're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I would want to know more about your dress and everything for the royal wedding but before that let me come back to an, an, Anjana. Um, so, you set up these shoes to help parents and people to feel comfortable. Yes. But it's it's uh, also, it contributes to charities as well, doesn't it? So yes. Tell us a bit about that. Well, um, for us, when, um, as I mentioned, to go through something so life-changing as a cancer diagnosis in a baby, um, and then you go on such a long road the the road to recovery of three years is so long but then the future seems so uncertain um so um generally um children um under the age of 12 if they are diagnosed with leukemia uh, they're normally given a sort of 80 90 percent survival rate um so that's obviously it's a terrible diagnosis, but if you're going to have any yes. statistics, it's, it's, you know, um, you're on the better side of it. However, we learned when Mia was diagnosed, because she was an infant, it's actually only a 50% survival for her to reach the age of five. Oh. So you're caring for a child, um, but suddenly this hope for the future is so uncertain. Um, but as parents we are naturally we've always been naturally very forward thinking and positive and um you know always looking to look at the future and plan and and the diagnosis is so um difficult was so difficult for us to get our head around um so when we did start the chapter of okay so let's pour our feeling and our emotion into what it took for us to literally sit at the end of the the bed and you know take one step at a time, how do we pour that into something? So we poured that into the design, um, the way that the, 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 the trainers are designed, which I'll tell you a little bit about. But in terms of the charities, um, there were two key charities that played a very big part in our journey. Um, and that 50% survival rate just sits so uncomfortably with me as a parent. Um, the more research I did, I learned that uh, that survival rate hasn't changed in over a decade. Um, so for me as a parent, um, think, trying to think about the possibility of the future, I, I couldn't sit comfortably knowing that in another 10 years time, if I don't make noise about this, that another parent is going to get the same diagnosis okay. and the same survival rates yes. that I had. So that was one area that I felt very inspired by, that I want to use my voice, I want to use this platform, what can I do? And Blood Cancer UK um, are, have been incredible with the work that they've done. Now, Mia turned five in December 2000, um, and um, just the year gone, 2021. And for us, it, it's a moment that we were waiting for. And it was very emotional. Yes. Um, and she, she turned five. She's five and a half. She's healthy. She's well. And it's everything that I can hope for. But of course, I hope that she continues to stay well. Um, and that the reason she's here is because of the work that's already gone um, before us in terms of research that's taken place which is why they're trying to really work hard on improving their survival rates so out of all the sales 10 percent um, of our sales of one's trainers are committed to continuous research um, of blood cancer to blood cancer uk that is looking at how we can improve the survival rates of infants that are born into the world um, and the other area is we spent nine months at Birmingham Children's Hospital 
during Mia's um, intensive chemotherapy care. And we spent uh, 225 nights at the Ronald McDonald House in Birmingham. And again, it's a charity that's really close to my heart. Um, I don't know how much you know about the charity. I'm sure you do. I've seen you at a number of those events, but they provide homes to families um, that have a critically ill child like Mia. And we just became resident there. Um, and that was a really big milestone for us with, with the charity. I think I would like to hear more about that actually. After, But before that, let's take a short break and then we will come back after the break. So don't go away, uh, there's more to hear and uh, we will be back on, the, on Beyond TV UK on Empowered Women's Show in a few minutes time. Birmingham Irashi Pashe Kato Market Achi Oriental Supermarket Sheda Shobar Maji Mach Mansho Shaki Shobji Shob Taja Bhai Er Laika Tobo Erandho Neto Mozai Khai Oriental E Bazar Kore Eto Shanti Pai Akalu ki haure moto kar par ka se bhaai Oriental Hala Store, Coventry Road, Small Heath, Birmingham Aapni ki aapna restaurant te jannno commercial cooker, tanduri, hot plate, oven, ebon canopil bishwasto pratishthan khud chen Aapni ki ee shakol shamugri UK Standard Service Certificate CE shaho chan তাহলে আর ভাবনা নেই সুদীর্ঘ কুড়ি বছর স্পেন ইটালি এবং বাংলাদেশে সুনামের সাথে ব্যবসা করার পর এখন বার্মিংহামে খোলা হলো আমাদের শোরুম এবং ফ্যাক্টরি আসসালামু আলাইকুম একটা ভালো রেস্টুরেন্ট এবং একটা ভালো ব্যবসার জন্য একটা ভালো কুকারের প্রয়োজন হয় আলহামদুলিল্লাহ আমি অনেকদিন খোঁজাখুঁজির পর বার্মিংহাম কমার্শিয়াল কুকার যারা সি অ্যাপ্রুভ তাদের কাছ থেকে আমি একটা কুকার কিনেছিলাম কুকারটা অত্যন্ত ভালো এবং খুবই ভালো সার্ভিস দিচ্ছে এবং তাদের ব্যবসা প্রতিষ্ঠানের সার্ভিসটাও খুবই ভালো Hello, welcome back to Empowered Women Show. We just took a quite short break and with me I've got Rosie and Anjana here and they are sharing their journey to success. Two very successful businesswomen who have transformed lives of many people. But before we broke, um, went for a break, Anjana, you were talking about Ronald McDonald's. Now everyone can relate to McDonald's uh, because they are actually the people who we all go to. Every young kid <laughs> loves McDonald's. And I've always noticed there's a small box on the, uh, by the counter where people put money in there. Mm -hmm. So is that the money that goes to Tell yes, um, I'm just like you. Uh, until I needed the services, I only thought Ronald McDonald were the burger people. Um, <laughs> you know, chips and burgers. Um, and, you know, obviously lots of people love them. But uh, no, their charity is called Ronald McDonald House Charities. And the charities provide a home away from home for 
families like mine who have a, a critically ill child and when you live so far away from home the last thing that you want to do as a parent is be too far away from your really sick child um, and it was probably the only way that we survived um, when you are given a diagnosis like this with Mia, we were told very quickly that uh, you won't be spending time at home, you will be resident in the hospital. And they were right, Mia had a gruelling nine months of intense chemotherapy. She had four rounds of chemotherapy, lumbar punctures, um, uh, lines, surgeries, everything. Um, and she had all the side effects. So. And she's not one yet, so she was obviously trying to build her immune system at the same time. She was a very poorly child, as you expect anybody that's experienced cancer. It's, it's not pretty. So having, in a hospital, there's not much space, so you've only got a, a sort of a small bag that you have all of your possessions in. So having a room was huge for us. It's a five-minute walk away from the hospital and you have your own room and uh, it's a lovely building that um, incredible stuff that uh, give you a space to hang up your clothes. It sounds really daft yeah. but when you're living out of a bag and you're stressed and worried and you've got sick and all sorts over you the last thing you're thinking about is how your things are so having somewhere to put your clothes where you can wash your clothes uh, where you can make a cup of tea they've got a communal kitchen where you can lie on a bed um, that isn't a camp bed. Um, that rest is so important when you are trying to look after a sick child. And everybody knows it's dealt with cancer, it's a marathon. And you have to find ways to look after yourself so you can be well for the next day. And we stayed in the house for 225 nights. So, you know, we, it's, it's a huge charity for us as a family. So much so that we have, um, as a family, spoken at a number of their gala dinners about our experiences to help them raise more money. Um, last year, I joined the Board of Governors and it's probably one of my proudest positions and roles um, where I feel like I can contribute. As a family, we've done a number of fundraisers, uh, in Mir included, in lockdown. She did a fundraiser and we raised enough money as a family to sponsor one of the rooms that we actually stayed in. Um, so, you know, it, 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 I think it's a charity that will always be a part of our life because when you have an experience like this, you don't forget the people or the organisations that help you get through it. Um, and yeah, Ronald McDonald's very, very special to us. That's, um, that's actually great to hear because one of the things that when people go to McDonald's, all they mm. get is the happy meal for the children mm. and, and, and the burgers, but you don't realize what they are doing behind the scene yeah. to help families like yourself. And it's absolutely amazing. Not many people actually know about mm. the impact Ronald McDonald's charities making. Yes. So it's wonderful to hear that from you. So thank you so much for sharing that with thank us. You. Now, Rosie, um, now I know you um, do a lot of work with women. You are helping. Uh, there's a great project that I was also chairing, uh, which was the Enterprise Project. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that piece of work that you did with women. Yeah, it was a really interesting piece of work, actually. So again, we. Um, put together a team of experts, so <laughs> you were one of them, uh, and we created a new programme that was tailored to support, um, it was actually young women and older women coming together to share experiences and passions and help them to develop business ideas. So some people came and they already had a business idea, others came and they weren't really sure but they thought they might want to set up a business and a couple of people actually had a product and were starting to sell it as well. So um, it was a, a real journey kind of using the uh, concept of pickles um, to teach about uh, market research and branding and product design and, and pricing and actually going out and selling um, and the great thing about it was that we helped them to pitch. So we put together a team of mentors um, 
from professional services, from banks, uh, to be able to give them feedback on um, their pitch and their business plan uh, to help them to take it forward as well. And they had the opportunity to um, get £500 to help them to start their business like I had to start mine. Excellent. And those women all from mainly Bangladeshi and Pakistani background, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I saw the start of the project and how the women were. And at the end of it, the confidence they had, the presentation skills they displayed, I was wowed by them. And some of the products they created, those cakes, and, and um, I, I, I can still taste them, actually. You can tell I love my sweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. We had the gorgeous um, trees of fruit and the fruit baskets and things. Yeah, there were some amazing businesses. I know. I mean, how are they all doing now? Yeah, I mean, some of them have gone into different things. So um, there was a lady who was creating kind of healthy fruit um, kind of desserts, but she's actually um, started a business kind of uh, advising people on nutrition. So I think people have just kind of found slightly different paths from uh, what they came onto the program with, but actually they've applied those same skills so yeah it's really interesting to kind of see yes it was actually I find it really fascinating the way you gave them the exposure to you know business planning marketing and and also the products the way you've um, you've got them to demonstrate the product and sell them I mean you know what um, I was I was absolutely um, I suppose um, amazed by the transformation and that's exactly what we're actually talking about here about women empowering women women supporting women women building each other up because we always find um, strong women build stronger women mm. and this is what we're about we're about empowering women and it's so wonderful for me to have two inspirational women who are empowering other women and also giving back to the community in in so much abundance as well. Now, I mean, the question is, is that because of your upbringing? Like, is it because uh, of the way you were brought up that, you know, help you take this direction in your life? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know about you, Ange, but for me, um, kind of growing up in a community, you know, going to the Godwa most weekends and actually like serving food and, you know, just seeing everybody as equal and, you know, just, just not kind of being selfish and actually helping other people. We just grew up and that, that wasn't a different way to be. That was, uh, wasn't a special way to be. That was just the norm that everybody yes. did. So I, I think that's just the, the background to, to kind of my thinking and the way that everybody around me was as well. So yeah, I think that's definitely um, inspired and, and uh, kind of pushed forward what I do. Was that, um, also, was your parents, um, did your parents do a lot of work in the community or? I mean, not really, to be honest. I mean, yeah, they, they did a lot, but not in the same kind of way. It was always like really in the background. So um, my dad set up a karate club. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. It was actually in the community centre that was next to our Godwara. Yeah. And um, there was, you know, it, it grew to so many people. But wow. It was, it was 50, 50p every session and actually it was in quite a kind of a deprived ward of Coventry. So 50p was quite a lot of money, but it was also quite accessible. So, you know, it was just amazing to see that he commuted, you know, he had a really intense job and every week he'd just put on this, this karate class. Um, and it started from about five people and it must have gone up to about kind of over 50 or so. Um, all different ages from about four or five all the way up to people in their 60s. Um, and it's not the kind of thing that you'd think is yeah. community work, but actually it was it was incredible. Um, and, you know, sitting on the, the temple kind of um, committees and things like that. Um, but yeah, not, not necessarily kind of projects, yes. but definitely giving back in certain ways. Yeah. Excellent. So was your dad your inspiration? Or? Yeah, both my parents actually. You know, my dad was very much, you know, reach for the stars and you'll, you'll you know, achieve something. <laughs> you know, you'll get close <laughs> to the moon. Um, and my mum's just a, a, an incredibly strong woman, you know, a real rock. Um, and that was very, very inspirational for me. 
Wow, amazing. So, Angela, so do you actually have, um, I mean, your upbringing? Yeah, I relate to a lot of what you've said, Rosie, because I'm also first generation born here. My parents were immigrants that came to the UK um, in the 70s. Um, but I think probably a little bit differently. My, my, my dad um, was, he's not with us anymore now, but uh, he was a, a, a very happy, jovial, he wore his heart on his sleeve and you could hear his laugh from sort of like miles away. He had this raucous personality. And, um, but he was a labourer. I come from parents, you know, my mum didn't speak English. They came to this country, but my dad always had aspirations to want to do more, but he had five children and responsibilities. So although he had a desire, I, I, f I feel that, you know, I, I, I now when I look back, especially when I became a parent, um, I felt that, you know, what he wanted was stunted because he had responsibilities. Um, and for me, I think losing him um, uh, sort of 20 odd years ago, he was only 49 at the time when he passed. So he was very young. So sorry, uh, yeah, so I think that he his legacy for me is to, just just to try, just to try. And then when I became a parent, um, I think I his loss, I felt it even more um, because my little girl doesn't know her nana and I'd love her to know who he was and personality. And I think because I, as hard as life gets sometimes, you know, even before we started the ones business, I've got a recruitment business that I've been doing for a number of years. And every time it, it gets tough, I always remind myself how much tougher my dad had it. Um, so I think, you know, he worked in factories and worked long hours and did horrible work. And, you know, he, it's why I sit where I do. It's why I got an education. It's why I got a degree. And I'm incredibly thankful to him. It's really funny because I, I never told him. <laughs> And I don't think I really showed him. Oh. I'm too young to... I'm sure he's watching. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those that I think that as a parent, what he has left, the imprint in me is, I, I want to be able to keep his legacy alive through the work that I do and hope my daughter's proud of me in the future. And he may not have um, built anything huge or magnificent, but what he's done is huge for me. Um, and I'm so grateful. Um, wow. And thank you for letting me say that out loud. I never really said it out loud before. I'm sure he's watching. But it, it's a coincidence that both of your inspirations were your father's. You know, there's a saying that girls are daddy's girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my inspiration was my father and my mother, actually. But I have to admit, uh, you know, the saying that uh, your, your first man in your life is your father. And it it's shows the impact that he's actually mm -hmm. had on both of you and the strength that he has given you both as well, well, your fathers. And I, I have to admit, my father was my strength. He was my rock, but he's no longer with us. But I know, I know he's watching over us. So, um, but yeah, sadly, we are coming to the end of our show, actually. <laughs> Can you believe we've been talking? And it didn't even feel like no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> so before we go, I know both of you have actually achieved a lot of awards. You've got an MBE as well. So tell us a bit about some of the awards that you've won, Rosie. Yeah, I was um, so fortunate to be able to um, go to Buckingham Palace to pick up my MBE from uh, Prince William back in 2019 oh, wow. um, for the work that I do at Miss Macaroon, supporting young people into work. So yeah, it was an incredible day and um, I was really fortunate I got to take my partner, my mum, my dad, but I um, also got to take my nana G. Oh. And yeah, it was amazing. It was his, you know, he just turned 90 and... Yeah, it was incredible for him to be able to join us. Um, he passed away this year, which is really so sad. But he was a massive inspiration, huge inspiration. He really pushed me down down the route of you know just do whatever you want to do, and just um, you know educate yourself and you will succeed. So it was brilliant to be able to share the day with him. Oh wow, well, that's that's such a sweet story. And for him to actually go seeing you at Buckingham Palace and receiving an award from, uh, so you so you're a frequent visitor to the royal family then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my mum's like a queen. She turned up in her beautiful purple brocade suit. She thought she was having a coronation. Wow. And uh, I'm sure your dress was outstanding as well. 
as as always. Um, but you've won a few other awards because I've, I've actually lost count of how many awards you've been winning. So what are the other awards that you've actually won? Um, so I bet you forgot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the last award um, that I won was uh, back in November. It was the um, Every Woman Award uh, in the social enterprise category, which is amazing. Um, we were nominated in the GQ magazine Food and Drink Award uh, as well, shortlisted there. And we're currently um, shortlisted in the Great British Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, wow. which um, the ceremony takes place in this November. So fingers crossed for that one. Fingers crossed. I wish you all, all the best for that. Um, thank you. I know you've just recently won an award yeah. as well. Yeah, not as many as you. I haven't got an MBE, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm working towards it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we obviously we've been trading since uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, so it was incredibly special for us to uh, get the Rising Star of the Year Award um, with the Startup National Series um, that took place uh, about a month or so ago. And it, honestly, it was great for us because we have been trading for very long, uh, but it's been a very long journey to get here, including the pandemic and all the challenges that, uh, that we faced. But to have your product um, and your journey recognize um, publicly, it's, you know, and it's our first one, it was so special um, for us. So yeah, it's, it, it's our first, so yeah, very, very proud. Absolutely amazing, but I suppose the biggest award for you is Maya, who's actually, I have to admit, she's so beautiful and so <laughs> cute. And, so. and you know, from the age of one, you've been through a lot and to come out of that, and also in, you know, the inspiration you've had from even that tragic moment of your life to help others. It is so wonderful to hear that. I mean, I'm honored to have both of you oh, on you. the show today. So before we go, is can I ask you to say an inspirational message to our viewers? Definitely. Would you like to go first? <laughs> no, <thank you. laughs> so for me, um, I think it's always just go for it. Just figure out what your passion is and have a go. Whether you start with five pounds, 50 mm. or 500, you can just try and see what happens. Thank you very much. Great advice. I think for me, um, inspiration can come at any stage in your life, any time, at any moment. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is when you are hit with something that moves you, that makes you feel passionate and inspired, grab it and run with it because the worst thing that can happen is it didn't work but you'd have walked away with knowing that you tried but who knows what could happen and I think that's worth trying. Thank you very much wow really really inspirational messages and um, as you can hear from both of our um, guests that passion following your heart mm -hmm. and believing in what you're doing is so important so you know we are here today talking about the work that they are doing. But I know there are so many other women out there who are doing some great, exceptional work. And if you would like to come on the show, then please do get in touch with us because here we are sharing the journey of inspirational women who have overcome obstacles and barriers and become successful, but not only successful, they are also helping and inspiring other women and building a stronger economy. So with that, I would like to thank both of my guests and also the chief executive, <laughs> Mia, and, and my whole team. We have a big team of Beyond TV UK who are behind the scene working and supporting us. And I'd like to thank you all, the viewers as well, for watching and supporting us. So please do subscribe to Beyond TV UK and I look forward to seeing you all again at the next Empowered Women show. Thank you so much. Birmingham era she pashe kato market achi Oriental supermarket chera shobar majhe Maach mangsho shak shokji shob taja bhai I 
ইন্টালে বাজার করে এত শান্তি পাই হাকা লুকি হাওরের মতো কারপার কাছে ভাই ওই আনছাও হালাস্টো কভেন্ট্রি রাইড স্মো হেফ পামিংগাম আপনি কি আপনার রেস্টুরেন্টের জন্য কমার্শিয়াল কুকার তন্দুরি হট প্লেট ওভেন এবং ক্যানোপির বিশ্বস্ত প্রতিষ্ঠান খুঁজছেন আপনি কি এই সকল সামগ্রী ইউকে স্ট্যান্ডার্ড সার্ভিস সার্টিফিকেট সিই সহ চান তাহলে আর ভাবনা নেই সুদীর্ঘ কুড়ি বছর স্পেন ইটালি এবং বাংলাদেশে সুনামের সাথে ব্যবসা করার পর এখন বার্মিংহামে খোলা হল আমাদের শোরুম এবং ফ্যাক্টরি আসসালামু আলাইকুম একটা ভালো রেস্টুরেন্ট এবং একটা ভালো ব্যবসার জন্য একটা ভালো কুকারের প্রয়োজন হয় আলহামদুলিল্লাহ আমি অনেক দিন খোঁজাখুঁজির পর বার্মিংহাম কমার্শিয়াল কুকার যারা সি অ্যাপ্রুভ তাদের কাছ থেকে আমি একটা কুকার কিনেছিলাম কুকারটা অত্যন্ত ভালো এবং খুবই ভালো সার্ভিস দিচ্ছে এবং তাদের ব্যবসা প্রতিষ্ঠানের সার্ভিসটাও খুবই ভালো আমি হ্যাপি এবং আমার কিছু স্টাফরাও হ্যাপি বার্মিংহাম কমার্শিয়াল কুকার লিমিটেড ইউনিট সিক্সটি নাইন সিডেনহাম রোড বি ওয়ান 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 ডিজি বার্মিংহাম ফোন নম্বর জিরো সেভেন নাইন ফাইভ 